Hello, I'm Steven Steen. I'm the Vice President of Industrial IoT at Poseidon Systems. And today I want to talk a little bit about how online oil condition monitoring is really transforming O&M within the mining space. A little bit of a background I think everyone is familiar with and has uh, lab sampling as a practice for oil condition monitoring. And we want to highlight that it's online sensors are not a direct replacement for that lab analysis. For example, on the right hand side, you can see a very short um, excerpt from one of the partners that we work with. It's just a half page of roughly four pages of test. And they utilize you know, more than 150 different tests to provide those measurements back. And those are very accurate, direct, repeatable measurements uh, for different oil properties. Whereas online sensors, as we show here in a little bit, can only replicate a couple of those online. And in other cases are trending other uh, related uh, measurements to uh, give an indication of whether or not something is wrong with the oil. Um, but it is very good because it complements lab analysis in terms of reducing the dependency on the lab analysis as well as the need for a high levels of periodic sampling. Therefore, you can kind of re replace uh, and use the training from the online sensors as an analog for the periodic sampling that had been done in the past. So what that system and how that works for IoT might look like um, here at Poseidon, this is a list of sensors and, and devices we use to make different measurements uh, as well as pull those into a data logger and an edge device to get that data back to a monitoring platform. And so there's a lot of flexibility to add different sensors and the right sensors for each individual application. And so we talk a little bit about what the value is for online oil condition monitoring. Um, if you look at the graphs on the right hand side, you can see an example of offline oil analysis. And this is a theoretical example of, you know, when something might go bad versus when you take a sample. And you can see, you know, at some point an issue begins, you may or may not have a, a good sampling time frame set up where you would be able to catch that. Um, and in some cases, you may actually have a fault starting to occur and you may get a result back from the oil sample that there's no problems. Uh, one of the values with the online oil condition monitoring is that it is always on. And so when the issue does start to begin and we're measuring those uh, indications that there's a problem, the detection can come much earlier, uh, the issue can be investigated in the repair. And so it really does enable your proactive maintenance um, by catching those conditions before really a lot of the damage um, would occur and preventing that from hap happening. And with online sensors, we do take a lot of measurements, and so that helps with repeatability, um, less human error, as there's no human in the loop. Uh, and we can also get correlations with different uh, operations of the machine to kind of see how using that vehicle or using that piece of equipment or stationary um, tool ends up causing or uh, damage or issues with the oil that you wouldn't see before. Uh, some of the other value points is that because there's no human in the loop, your safety increases, uh, there's less personnel near equipment, and in some cases you may have very remote locations, and so those would require less visitations, um, and dependency for those oil lab analysis would go down. So as an, an overview of some of the examples that we'll talk about today, this is a, an example list of the oil sensors that we have uh, relevant to oil reliability. Wear debris sensing uh, is, is a big one, which really continually monitoring for wear debris, uh, metallic wear debris to indicate and uh, measure a fault or a failure happening within that piece of equipment. You have your oil condition uh, quality sensors, which are directly trying to measure things like the oil impedance or conductance dielectric. Um, other things such as water and oil, giving you relative humidity. These are really to trend and detect abnormal changes in the oil condition uh, as opposed to a direct measurement that you would get from uh, lab analysis. Uh, and then there's some other analogs, uh, things like contamination sensors, particle counters, as well as connected breathers uh, to give you the life of the breather as part of your reliability program. Or hopefully you're using uh, desiccant breathers to keep moisture out uh, of those uh, pieces of equipment. So one example uh, we like to show, this is a, a nice survey of uh, quite a few industrial assets, uh, roughly 140 of those. And what we did is we took a look at what is the lab analysis giving you in return uh, versus what an online, in this case, wear debris sensor would give you. So we're really comparing the output from the lab analysis and how good it is detecting a fault or a failure in that piece of equipment. Maybe as an example, we'll use a crusher gearbox. Uh, versus having that online sensor in place. And so you can see on the left-hand side, uh, the max values for all the different ISO cleanliness, as well as the maximum iron concentration, we pulled from a three-year period. And so we compared that to the known fault or failure history for the fleet of uh, industrial gearboxes. 
and found very little correlation to those measurements with the actual health. As you can see, the failed gearboxes are in red. Some of those are very low. Some of those are very high. None of them really cross the faulty level you get from a lab. Um, compare that to an example from that same fleet on the right-hand side using a wear debris sensor. Uh, we were able to catch that fault relatively early and then trend that over time to determine when it was getting really bad, as you can see here from that spike. And so from this, uh, compared to the lab samples, you were able to see that those all came back within spec um, or getting better, depending on when that was pulled. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the chances of pulling these wear debris, the large you know, debris into an oil sample and sending that in um, once or twice or maybe six or 12 times a year is, is very small where these online oil sensors are able to see them happening at all times. They get a, quite a high flow before they get trapped in the filter and you can pick those out fairly early. So, you know, using that sort of feedback as well as going to online um, uh, relative humidity for an example, this is a good one where an event of water contamination was caught immediately. Uh, the damage was actually measured from the wear debris sensor, measuring directly how much uh, uh, metal was, was released uh, when the water got into there. And so because of that, we were able to see both the root cause, the damage measure, we were able to confirm the corrective action and uh, they were to shut it down, uh, filter out the debris as well as the, the water, and return that, as you can see, relative humidity back to the normal uh, 30% uh, after doing an oil flush. This is an example where uh, they probably would have been a month or two before they may have even have drawn a sample and found a fault that they had to react to and done this fix. So it would have been operating uh, with quite a lot of water in it, generating that debris, probably leading to a catastrophic failure. Uh, before they actually had identified that this was a problem, in this case, a crusher gearbox. Within the mobile equipment space, things with diesel engines, for example, this is a good example of catching a coolant leak. Again, uh, if you're only pulling those samples uh, at usually best once a month, um, then uh, there are definitely times where things can happen, where, uh, let's say, a, a gasket seal starts to fail and you start to get uh, debris or, in this case, uh, contamination of coolant. Um, this obviously operate for quite a, quite a long time with that leak happening before you would see it. And so this is an example where we caught this uh, relatively early again. Um, right away it was able to be brought in and a very easy engine uh, fix was able to do as opposed to a full engine rebuild, which would have been a half million US dollars. And so knowing when that exact moment of contamination happened, identifying it, they were able to take it out of service. Uh, do the appropriate fixes and return it to service relatively quickly at a much lower cost than they would have done if they would have uh, had that engine fail. Giving an example of the connected breathers, uh, this is a good example of several different, uh, same gearbox, uh, two different gearboxes near the same location. In one case, uh, the breather was very quickly losing um, its, uh, its uh, life in terms of being used up by the humidity that it was it was capturing, and the other um, gearbox that was very very close by uh, was not same location, uh, and so this is a good comparison of showing the value of not running uh, those pieces of equipment where the desiccant breather has been used up. Um, you may have a periodic uh, change out procedure. You may have other ways of doing that, but uh, going to a life based uh, condition based replacement, you can really optimize and keep the humidity out of those pieces of equipment. Um, whereas one might be completely different than another, even though they're fairly similar in fairly uh, similar locations. This was also able to detect a problem with that gearbox uh, that was eventually replaced, but the, uh, the uh, operator was able to replace those desiccant breathers in a timely fashion so that they could uh, keep the humidity lower in that gearbox. We talk a little bit about um, the, the online connected pieces. There's also online um, non-connected in terms of connected to the piece of equipment. Um, this is an example of device which is interesting for grease components where you can take a, a, do a grease run, take a grease sample, uh, come back and drop all those samples into this device and using this device, you're able to get an immediate feedback of the contamination um, or ferrous contamination within your grease. Uh, and so you could very quickly identify and track uh, faults and failures on your grease components, uh, whether or not you need to go back and do another flush of those components to get um, the, the dirty grease out. And um, having this low-cost device on site as well connected to a computer 
recording that data would allow you to track and trend that and make uh, grease analysis a little bit more accessible where you'd use this as a scanning tool and a trending tool to see if problems are occurring and then maybe take that sample and send it in to a, um, a lab to get further analyzed what that fault may be. So I want to give you an example of what uh, one of these solutions may look like. Uh, this is ours. We call it the FQMS, the Fluid Quality Monitoring System. Uh, you can see that it comes with uh, several sensors, a wear debris sensor, viscometer, oil quality, including uh, direct output of water uh, relative humidity uh, from the oil and temperature uh, of the fluid. And on the right hand side, you can see a couple of examples. One is an installation on a haul truck. Uh, the other is an installation on stationary piece of equipment. But what's nice about this is it's relatively easy to install. There's one inlet for fluid and one outlet for fluid uh, to pull that uh, fluid in and return it back to the piece of equipment. Um, it is designed for industrial IoT in terms of it has a data logger, it has multiple ways of communicating uh, back to the, the software. It can be integrated into your own data system if that's what you are looking to do. And it supports the continuous uh, real-time monitoring. Um, so when we take a look at this and uh, we look at how that may integrate back in, you know, that standard FQMS comes with oil quality, wear debris, viscosity, everything we talked about. But uh, because it is a true IoT solution, you're also able to think about other sensors that may be useful. And so when you're looking at IoT solutions for this, uh, thinking about flow meters, pressure, temperatures, proximity, particle counters, um, wireless vibration even, you're really looking for a full end-to-end -end solution. So uh, really being able to customize an IoT solution is important for um, your oil online oil monitoring program and what that looks like. And so uh, making sure that you take that into account, uh, having a flexible data logger, uh, as well as a software platform that can handle those different inputs is important uh, to kind of have an all-in-one location where you can look at that data. Secondarily, being able to have that integrated with your oil lab analysis is important as well. Our platform is able to do that as well. And so you'd be able to have uh, both your lab data and your online data in one location uh, to kind of optimize how you look at your oil quality and condition. And so here's a, an example of how all that comes together installed in the haul truck that I showed you, um, being able to provide that data back to uh, either a mobile device or your computer, anything with the web browser. An example of on the left hand side of just changing your oil too often and so being able to go back and seeing okay this is what it should look like and here's where I'm changing my oil as opposed to uh, not changing it through the full life cycle of that oil uh, and extending the life obviously reducing your oil cost and um, over time and the right hand side uh, it's, again this is the example we showed earlier of catching that coolant leak being able to see immediately getting an alarm getting an alert that there is something wrong with the oil that we have to take action on and so when you have that full IoT end-to-end -end solution, you really have a streamlined process of not only gathering the right data um, through a reliable source, reliable connection, but also being able to see that data uh, and get those alerts immediately when things are, are going wrong or could be going wrong so that you can take the right next steps uh, to correct that issue. And so some of the key takeaways um, I'd like to have you guys walk away with is one, the faster detection is uh, the, the obvious value. So it allows for immediate corrective and preventative action that you would be unable to do with uh, periodic oil sampling uh, where you do have long periods of time in between where things can go wrong and, and you would not have that sample pulled to see uh, what those results look like. It's also nice that it's very repeatable and trendable, which allows you to be very confident in the oil condition, especially if you are um, combining it with lab sampling uh, for, for those of you who have very remote locations uh, where you do not have technicians there often, you can save a lot of cost of having having and forcing them to go there to take those oil samples or do some other things. Um, but if you do have the uh, technicians on site, just not having to uh, get them into that working environment as often uh, while pieces of equipment may or may not be in operation or running is a big safety improvement. But we do want to make sure that we're very clear that it is definitely not a re complete replacement for lab analysis. Definitely will help reduce the number of samples, um, but they do go hand in hand. In one case, you have lab samples who are going to give you a very good, in detailed understanding of, of what the actual in, you know, measurements are for these different oil properties. Another one is a trending and detection tool 
to increase your reactiveness and uh, preventative action you can take to improve the uh, the reliability. So I thanks for for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, to Stephen Steen uh, at PoseidonSystems.com, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Bye.